look at the footage and gameplay, how smooth everything is. Pay attention to all the details. Hey everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Scepter 27 inch curved computer monitor. I did receive this monitor from Scepter to check out today, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this monitor or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. It's a 27 inch curved monitor. It's the C27 Business Pro with some additional product information on both sides of the box. We have some quick tech specs again on the back side. Here's a look at our ports and IO right there. 1920 by 1080p full HD display, 75 Hertz for the refresh rate, 1500R for the curvature. This also features Scepter's adaptive sync technology. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. All right, it's time for a quick viewer intervention. Yes, I'm talking to you. No, don't look away. I'm talking to you right now. In the last 28 days, almost 40,000 of you have viewed the TV Chef channel, but only 98 of you have become a subscriber so would you please consider clicking that subscribe button bonus points if you like comment and share our videos as well if you don't like our videos please give it a thumbs down click that dislike button and tell us why in the comment section we'd love to hear from you either way also bonus points for you if you want to share it with an ex-boyfriend ex-girlfriend a strange sibling spouse you get the idea we'd be grateful for that as well here are all the contents first up we have our product literature featuring our one-year warranty information followed by their customer service and contact card. We also have a full user guide and manual in color with charts and diagrams, walking you through everything you need to know about getting your monitor set up. We have all of our controls, learning more about its features, connection options and types with diagrams that even walk you through the menu right here with screen grabs and all the different menu settings. It's very detailed and thorough. We have our supported resolutions for HDMI and VGA, troubleshooting, tips and tricks, cleaning the monitor, tech specs, rated for over 30,000 plus hours. And then our warranty info. Also, in case you're wondering, three milliseconds for the response time, G to G, and 280 nits for the brightness. VA panel. Next, we have our stand in two pieces, a plastic base and a metal um, armor body. We have an HDMI cable right here. All of our screws and hardware kit for this monitor to get everything set up. We have our Scepter Phillips head screwdriver, our power supply and adapter. And lastly, we have the curved monitor itself. Let's go ahead, let's look at this in more detail. Here's a look at the back side of the monitor. Front and center, we have the Scepter logo and branding with the cool little design up in that corner. Our menu button and control options, our power button, our speaker grills. We have a Visa mount 100 by 100 if that's what you wanna use. This is where we're gonna install the included stand, Kensington security lock, and all of our ports and IO. Our DC in for power, audio out, audio in, VGA, and two HDMI 1.5. Four ports. Let's tip it up and get a feel for this monitor and its curvature. Again, 1500R. Got some venting down here at the bottom, some screws as well. Take a peek at it from the side, get a feel for how thick this is at the bottom and then how thin it is up at the top. And we can do that from the bird's eye view up here. So very thin and then a little bit thicker at the base. And then now you're looking at the main screen right here, receptors, logo and branding down here, indicator light, HDMI 75 Hertz, and a cool brushed metal design for our bezel going around the monitor. Now let's go ahead, let's get the stand installed. Stand installation consists of a couple of steps. First thing we have to do is take our metal arm and attach it to the plastic base. It's really only gonna fit one way with these tabs here at the bottom. So line it up and then just gently twist. So there we go, we got the first piece connected together. Now we have one screw in this bag right here, it's even labeled base screw, that we need to use the included Phillips head screwdriver and fasten that screw in place. Then once we have that assembled, we're gonna line this up on the back side of the monitor right there and take the two remaining Phillips head screws, drop them in place, fasten them down tightly, and then we'll just take this little cover and we'll put that on the back and then our stand is set up. Base screws installed, got the other two screws installed. Now we'll just take our plastic cover here, press it in place 
and ta-da, there we go. We now have the included stand installed. Check this out, let's go over the features here. So first thing you'll notice, there's no swivel to the left or to the right. You just got to physically move and rotate the monitor. There is a tilt adjustment. This is our max tilt down or forward, and here's our max tilt back. There's no height adjustment or anything else, so bring your own books if you need this higher on your desk. But there we go, we have the stand installed. Everything's working great, it's just very basic, so keep that in mind if you want any of those additional features I just mentioned, you'll have to bring and provide your own stand. Now let's go ahead, plug it in, powered on, and check out the menu. So with the monitor plugged in, powered on, and connected to our desktop PC, let's bring up the menu. Here's our different options. So first, let's start with Quick Start. And we can use the arrow keys on the back to browse the different settings. I'm not gonna go over each individual feature. I just wanna show you all the different menu options that are available for your customization. So in the Quick Start, we have our preset, so we can change the image to different modes. We'll look at that more in a minute. Aspect ratio, different sources, volume adjustment, blue light shift, and adaptive sync. We can turn that on or off. Then let's go back, let's look at our picture settings right here. So again, same image presets, DCR, aspect ratio, and sharpness. So we can look and adjust all those right there with our nice picture settings. Then we have our color settings, so we can adjust the color temperature, gamma, tint, saturation, and there's your blue light again. And then lastly, we have our system settings. You may notice too, up at the top, we've had our input, so HDMI 1, and we're currently getting 1920 by 1080 at 75 hertz, which is what's advertised with this 27 inch monitor. But in our system settings, we have our overdrive settings. We have our adaptive sync, sleep mode, language, OSD position, timer, and transparency. Volume settings again, mute, and factory reset. If you haven't noticed too, they walk you through a nice brief description for all the different settings right here so you can understand more what it means to select that setting and how you need to change or tweak it accordingly. But that's a quick look at the menu. Very detailed, thorough, super easy to navigate and find exactly what you're looking for. So the menu already told us that we're at 1920 by 1080p at 75 hertz, but I wanted to show you our advanced display settings within Windows, also showing the same thing. We're getting 1920 by 1080 for our resolution, and our refresh rate is technically 74.973 hertz. If for some reason you're seeing something different with your setup, make sure within the window settings you go down here and from this drop down, select the correct refresh rate that you want. Now we're gonna cycle through the different picture settings right here. So currently we're in standard. Now we're in user where we can customize it ourselves, and you can make all those different adjustments. We have movie mode, eco mode, FPS mode, RTS mode, and back to standard. So I'll cycle through really quickly right here so you can see each individual mode and how it's gonna change the image. So check that out, right? Pretty substantial differences between them all. So just choose the one that fits whatever you're playing or streaming best. If you're watching a movie, you might wanna start with movie mode. RTS, FPS if you're doing some gaming. User mode if you want to just configure it yourself. But they do affect and change the image on the screen. Some subtle, some not. Just depends again what you're looking at on the display. But we'll do it one more time right here. Standard, user, movie, eco, FPS, RTS, back to standard. But you get the idea, a lot of different presets you can choose from, or again, customize it your own with user. Now we have the UFO test pulled up on our display right now, and this test is significant to show you why it matters to be able to have a high refresh rate and to have a PC or a console that can support higher FPS values to give you that buttery smooth footage up at the top at 75 FPS versus pushing 38 or 19 FPS. Look at how staggery, sputtering the UFO is as it moves across the screen. It looks much better for faster movement and motion up at the top when our FPS value matches our refresh rate. And this is why if you could do 120 Hertz at 120 FPS, 144 Hertz at 144 FPS, et cetera, et cetera, the higher you get, usually the smoother and better the footage is gonna look specifically for you gamers out there. Now let's talk about backlight bleed. So currently we have a full screen, black screen up on the display so we could check for any backlight bleed. This is a VA panel in case you're wondering and don't forget it's 1500R for the curvature. I did notice a little bit of bleeding down here at this edge in a smidge up at the top but it really wasn't too noticeable unless you were looking at it 
off to the side at an angle, so keep that in mind. And I haven't noticed it affecting any sort of image quality or anything along those lines. I'm not sure I've ever looked at a monitor and haven't noticed any sort of backlight bleed, or if it's an IPS panel, some IPS glow usually in the corner. So for me, not a big deal. Nothing that most of you probably ever notice, but I guess in the off chance you're looking at a black screen in the pitch black at an angle, I might add, then maybe that might be an issue for you. All right, now we have display cal results on the screen. They advertise 98% sRGB. Here's the results that we got, 97.8% sRGB, so really close to what they advertise for our coverage. And the volume we're showing 103.8% sRGB. In regards to Adobe RGB, we're showing 71.1% coverage and 71.5% Adobe RGB volume. And lastly, for DCI P3, we're showing 73.5% for our coverage and 73.5% also for our volume. Now for a simpler test, I just wanted to show you what it's like to browse the web with this monitor. Maybe you can get a feel for the 27 inch screen size and how good, clear and crisp everything looks and maybe just maybe the curvature might make a difference in your viewing experience. So we have the YouTube trending page pulled up right here. You can browse popular videos. Everything looks really nice though, very responsive and smooth. You can see the thumbnails as the videos start to play. Everything looks good, really easy to read. Next, we have The Verge, so if you want to use this to read your favorite news sites, things like that, The Verge is covering all things tech and tech news. Let's just click on an article here. So look at all different titles, right? Different fonts, images, ads, embedded TikToks. Clear, crisp, easy to read, easy to see. Keep in mind too, everything's gonna look better in person than it does with a camera pointed at a screen. That's just how it goes. And then lastly, maybe you wanna do some online shopping, right? We got Amazon pulled up right here. Easy to browse and find exactly what you're looking for. Colors display great. Really an enjoyable experience browsing the web, whether it's for entertainment, information, or to do a little bit of shopping. Now we're testing out the built-in speakers. They're rear-facing. We currently have it set to 100, and we're streaming the song Dripping With Ice by Music Chef. Music Chef is home to DMCA free and stream safe music for content creators. Got a nice hip hop beat here again, volumes maxed out. This is how it's gonna sound. So it's just nice that this monitor includes speakers. Sure, they don't sound the best, but as I always say, I'd rather have them and not need them than need them and not have them. So if you're in a pinch or you just want some basic audio, this is gonna be what you can expect to hear with the built-in speakers on the Scepter 27 inch curved monitor. Now it's time for my favorite test where we're gonna measure the input lag on this monitor. Basically input lag is different from response time. So the input lag is gonna be the uh, amount of delay lag between when a command's issued and what's being displayed on the screen. So if you're gonna be using this for gaming, it's important to have the input lag be as low as possible. And there we go, we're showing about 1.1, 1.2 milliseconds for our input lag. Let's check that middle value right here. Should be around eight, give or take. All right, 8.5, and then let's check that bottom value, our last value right here, should be around 16 or so. All right, 16 even for that last measurement. But there you go, 1.2 milliseconds for the input lag on this monitor. Now let's talk about gaming. First up, we have Forza 5 right here. Look at the footage and gameplay, how smooth everything is. Pay attention to all the details, the environment, the levels, now it's raining. Everything's looking really nice. Very fluid and smooth gameplay as you've come to expect. Man, looks so good. Definitely doesn't look as good in the video as you'll see in real life with your own eyes. But it's definitely looking nice. So far, so good. Now we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla pulled up right here. Look at the gameplay footage the movement of the characters, 
the vibrancy of the backdrop, right? All the colors on the trees, the sky, the clouds, the separation in detail, shadows. You get the idea of what you should be looking for. The smoke. Do you see any stuttering, sputtering? Anything along those lines? Love the flyover. Look at the water, the reflection. The guy in the boat fishing. Again, the fog, the haze, the smoke. Oh, up there. Colors look good for a VA panel. And then the pan back at the ruins in the town. Looks great. Now you're looking at Borderlands 3 gameplay and footage right here. Currently, we're getting around 130 FPS at 75 Hertz at 1080p. Fire, smoke looks good. The character's running. Little sneak attack firefight coming up. Love the slime explosion. Acid, whatever you want to call it. Got some more explosions coming up. A little flashbang. Look at that though. Still getting around 120 FPS right now. 1080, 75 Hertz. Pretty cool firefight. But that's Borderlands 3 for you. Now let's talk about next gen consoles. First up, I have a PlayStation 5 connected. Here's our video output information. You'll be able to get 1920, 1080 at 60 Hertz with this Scepter monitor. Don't worry, I haven't forgot about you Xbox people. We have the Xbox Series X connected. We're looking at the TV and display options. Currently we're getting 1080p and you'll also be at 60 Hertz for the refresh rate. So I've been using Scepter monitors for around four years now, so I can speak to the quality and longevity of the displays. I I've had zero issues with any Scepter monitor that I've owned, so I expect the same with this monitor long term. Where I think this really excels is a business environment, an office environment. Maybe you're looking for an affordable dual um, monitor setup. You'll appreciate having that slight curvature on this larger 27 inch screen size, especially if you wanna have another one right next to it. But overall, everything looks great, it works great. As you've come to expect with Scepter, we just get more for what we're paying. So nice large screen size, nice 27 inch curved display, but we get two HDMI ports on the back, a VGA port on the back, audio in and audio out, as well as built-in speakers. The stand and the speakers are probably the two things I'd wanna see improved in the future, but at this price point, it's really hard to complain because at least they give us a Visa mount option for the stand so we can bring our own and get the exact stand we want. And it's nice that they even include speakers at all. And this monitor is 1080p 75 Hertz, so they give us that slight overclocking instead of just a regular 60 Hertz display. So I'm not gonna knock them too many points because the price is right with this display and everything works as advertised.